Hi, I'm Alan Bresnik, Cable Video Practice Leader for Light Reading. I'm here in New Orleans at SCT Cable Tech Expo. We're visiting with Viavi. I'm talking to Koji Okamoto, who's Director of Product Line Management for Viavi. Yeah. Nice Hi, to Koji. You. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, and good to have you here. Can you tell us a little bit of background about Viavi yeah, and about the brand? Sure. So we used to be JDSU, formerly JDSU, and uh, we split into two publicly traded companies in August of 2015. And the VRV actually have two kind of components into the name. One V is the kind of way, and the other part of the RV is vision. So we're setting the vision for our operators and trying to get them becoming the, uh, really the vision to become true, and for us to also set the priority and focus. Even though the name changed, our actual heritage and experience hasn't really changed. The same passionate people working on the product. Right. And the biggest difference is that our vision now is really providing insightful information through visibility end-to-end -end inside of the network. Koji, Doxus 3.1 has been a big topic lately in the industry and also yeah. at this expo Absolutely. this week. Yeah. What is Viavi doing to enable operators to roll out Doxus 3.1? Yeah, it's a very, very big topic for sure for the last probably 12 months or so. And uh, we've been working with some of the top operators around the world who are very much in the front line of Doxus 3.1. Uh, one, you know, from both the Europe side and also in North America. Uh, we've been helping out with the preparation of their network to be ready for 3.1. And obviously one of the biggest change for 3.1 is the frequency potential extension as well as OFDM. So those two things, we do have a two different product categories trying to help them out with the head end and the hub site to be ready for the 3.1, as well as for the field technicians going to carry around with a DOCSIS 3.1 enabled test set. So we have actually showing both of those at our booth today. So two different sets of testing. Yeah, absolutely. How is Wi-Fi affecting operators? It seems like Wi-Fi is everywhere now. Oh, yes. That's a big, big challenge for our uh, operators. Uh, some of the study even show 30 to 40 percent of all technical calls coming into the operators are Wi-Fi related. Mm. That's because we're so used to the wired coax medium, which is still you know, one of the very important medium inside the home. But so many uh, customers are now using the smartphones and tablets and PCs uh, through Wi-Fi. Now the technician really needs the ability to see what's really happening behind the scene uh, for Wi-Fi. Because Wi-Fi is uh, unlicensed spectrum, so anybody can transmit that frequency band. So be able to distinguish the desired signal, which is a Wi-Fi signal, and undesired signal, which could be coming from all kind of noise source. And distinguish those two things is very, very important. So we're providing and now the tool showing here has been a very big hit and an important topic for us for Wi-Fi. What about so, the relationship between DOCSIS 3.1 and Wi-Fi? Oh yeah, it's still a big, big issue because you're going to have a pipe to the home with over DOCSIS 3.1, but after that it's really going to be the both coax distribution as well as the Wi-Fi distribution. So they're both coupled together. From the technicians and the work group and operator perspective, so they need to have a tool to be able to actually troubleshoot and verify for both DOCSIS 3.1 as well as the Wi-Fi uh, in the home to be completing the entire uh, service delivery to the end user. Koji, we've also been hearing a lot about virtualization and the impact it's going to have on the network. What is Viavi's posture on that? How can you help operators prepare for virtualization? Yeah, the great question. Um, definitely virtualization is starting to happen uh, for, uh, for cable operators and actually industry in general across the telco and cable and you know, all the uh, wireless providers as well. What's, what really means the operator now with the virtualization is ability for them to see things, uh, the insightful information in the, from the location that they may not actually have to send the technician to. Right? So that's really going to be the biggest benefit for, for operators. Another thing about virtualization is sometimes you can't have a visibility into end customer experience. For example, if you're going to be watching video on your iPad, how do you know what the quality looks like for that end customer? You don't. Yeah, you don't, even when you send a technician over there, you got to know exactly what they're watching and what device you're watching and so on. Right. So virtualization really helps in that context because you could start putting those software agents into those different locations of the network, including maybe the tablets and PCs in the customer premise device that allow the operator to be able to really view remotely what's happening into the, uh, in the customer experience. And that allows them to sectionalize also problem in throughout the network because you, know, you want to be able to say, hey, is the problem between this part of the network or this part of the network? And in order to do that, virtualization is a very effective tool because you have the ability to put those software agents sprinkle around the network to be able to segment problems. That's interesting. So what do you think will be the first step towards virtualization? Um, it's actually a couple of things that are happening. One, definitely in the video side. So we call multi-screen services. So it used to be all TV was your primary screen, but now actually primary screens, iPad, iPhones, PCs. Right. So that's one uh, virtualization 
important opportunity and uh, enablers for operator to really manage and customer experience. Other part is actually business services. Business services is a big growth factor for operators, and it's, it's very difficult to have a very uh, skilled, skilled technician to be able to send it to every location they want to turn up or troubleshoot. So there is a way to virtualize some of the test capabilities and deploy directly into the uh, enterprise and be able to remotely troubleshoot and then determine whether or not you should really send somebody there or not. Koji, thanks for explaining oh, things. Thank you very much. Right. Appreciate it. Sure.